Patrick Swatch. This is Seppi. Now today I'm going to be talking about the case where one of your favorite females squatted him. Right, a 42 year old Shelly and Allen. Right. Dropping her uncle someplace. Name all I'm on her. I'm currently looking at the documents. Right. The official documents surrounding the case. But this is from the United States District Court. Because you know we like to you know, read the details and see how, oh, especially like what Uncle Sam case, I know them break it down very detailed, so I'm actually looking at the affidavit. 14 pages long as you can imagine a whole lot of reading. Right? But I will give you the important part of them, the part of them really stand out to me. Right? So I'm going to say 14 pages. And basically you have a, a number of co-conspirators. So I'm going to say, it looks like say, Uncle Sam was working on Intel because they are not naming some of the co-conspirators them so that you know it sounds like they were cooperating. I wouldn't think they got ready. I wouldn't think they got ready when Uncle Samuel and Pan Smalley them love for you know give it who you are work for or give it who you are link with that's Uncle Sam do for them thing. They may just you know whole and pan look at one scam and then celebrate and say big victory. They may always try you know get the whole thing to tumble down. And it look like say based on me I see also. I don't know if there's a bigger case to come but it look like your favorite female constable. Right, was the target or the main target of Uncle Sam's like offer. Now we don't know if she ever start a leak. Maybe she start a leak and then a bigger network start on down. But right now, the work could always see with this affidavit. Now, may I tell them the part that stand out to me? I'm going to read it directly from the aff aff affidavit. Right. Check this out now, people. So it goes on to say that on February 22nd, 2020, Allen, that's your favorite female squad, Departed United States via Southwest Airline, blah blah blah, right, to Mobile. Right, records indicate that the next time Allen visited the United States was November 28, 2020. On September the 1st, 2021, I received information from a HSI special agent, right, so that's Homeland Security, right. And for those of you who don't know, um, they're not as popular as the FBI, but Homeland Security has, is a serious, serious um, branch of the American Security Forces. So, regarding Allen's applying entry into the United States following our arrival on a flight from Jamaica, Allen was referred to secondary inspection. So, they basically sent her to the secondary inspection. Now, Uncle Sam that watch her already. Uncle Sam that watch, the fact that they even want phone and them thing there. Remember, when they see how far they might track her, right? They can actually post some of the affidavit on the screen, right? But just now, say, Uncle Sam, they're really interested in her. So, she reached back into them place now. They must say, Uncle Sam will make her do certain things and drop at Jamaica, right? And make her think everything alright, you know? Make her feel comfortable because you're like, oh, we're going to travel three, four times because enough times she go to America and then we'll have her. So, as she go to America and I do her thing, Uncle Sam now will have her, then I'll lock her up, then I'll rush her. So, she starts to feel comfortable. Well, listen to her luck run out. It goes on to state. Right? Allen was referred to secondary inspection where customs and border protection, right. CBP officers and an HSI special agent interviewed Allen as well as conducted a border search of her luggage and cellular telephones. During the interview, Allen stated that she was a member of the JCF for the past 18 years. Hold on this one. Stick up in this one. 18 years. This is a 18 years of serving in the force officer. We're not that one. New recruit at trial look one thing. 18 years? And this is just when she get catching Uncle Sam place. Who knows what else she's been up to in her 18 years? Right, right now Carlton is traumatized because you know Carlton is like it rough for Carlton accepts it. You know, woman keep letting them things out. Carlton probably has said, no, I, I must I must the one JJ Nack is forced her to do it. I lie in my tail. Don't worry, don't worry, Miss Allen, when you come back a yard, I'll save you. Carlton, put your cape down. Put your cape down, bro. Right. You can't save her. Uncle Sam of her now. He goes on to state. Right. Allen described her daily work routine as general police duty, which includes patrolling, court duty, and office duty. She forget to mention some things. What she mean her daily work routine is general police duty? Includes patrolling court duty. No, you forget fit other than scamming. And this is just what she had about. Who knows what else she's been up to? She further stated that her cell phone, right? So now they might ask her about her phone. 
she further stated that her cell phone was not locked. The cell phone handed to CBP officers was an Android, while manually searching Allen's cell phone, an HSI special agent viewed the phone settings. Right. Then go and remember some, put on some of the code about the phone. Important part to stick to. During the inspection of the luggage, they discovered a second cell phone which was located in the side pocket of Allen's purse. The cell phone was an iPhone. Allen voluntarily provided the passcode to the iPhone. Very interesting. What do you just know now? CBP officers also observed Allen's behavior change once the iPhone was discovered, including noting that her hands seemed to be jittery. Your favorite female squad is start shake like a leaf. What does she give them the passcode? She gave them the passcode, or whatever on the phone, clearly. It's spooky. But she opened up the phone. And then her hands start get jittery. Carlton, you have to go save her, bro. Yeah, Carlton, she need a hug right now. Your favorite female squad is shaking because she's in front of the HSI and her. You see, maybe if I want to look at Squaddy, then when she work with uh, uh, Jamaica, she could have probably like, you know, Squaddy, help me out now. HSI now help her out. CBP now help her out. Dog, me and my Squaddy supper. So her hands in get jittery. CBP officers handed Allen's iPhone to an HSI special agent who conducted a border search of the iPhone. While manually searching Allen's second cell phone, right, in view the phone settings and details, blah blah blah, those are the phone numbers. Right. Now, them start analyze the bank account. They identify multiple accounts of Allen in the United States which have received fraudulent funds directly derived from this scheme. One of those accounts has been identified as a PNC bank account. On March 28, March 28, 2020, a subpoena was served on PNC. See that? Them subpoena the bank. When you see the lens to Uncle Samagoto, when you see the lens to Uncle Samagoto, bank records obtained for Allen's PNC bank account show there were only two deposits into her account, other than her initial account opening deposit. On February 14, 2020, there was a deposit of a Fox Communities Credit Union check, right, amounting to 6,000 US from victim one. And on April 22nd, 2020, there was a deposit of a Fox Communities Credit Union check in the amount of 4000 from victim 1, totaling $10,000 from victim 1. Your favorite squad in a trouble. Now, let me put it on the screen. Right. But, I mean, I'm going to try and screen record the whole thing and slowly play it in this video. But your favorite squad, it not look too good. It not looking too good. Now, it mentioned other co conspirators identified. Because one of them mentioned said they mean to a market and share ask him about fine and everything there. Right. But may I tell you right now, Carlton, you can't save her. Even though I tell you, say, she's going to need a shoulder for cry upon and I joke my mate, Carlton, don't waste the time, bro. HSI have her now. HSI have her now. And I'm not going to play with her. The fact that she's a member of the JCF, they're not busy about that. A 42 year old, 18 Year serving police officer. Go we'll get caught up in them things, huh? A 42 year old scammer. A 42 year old police officer scammer. Not even Netflix can make this up. Not even. 42. When you want. See what JCF needs to do now is to run fair file a yard. Because if she pull them things off in America, imagine what she'll do in Jamaica. Imagine the scammer that I share link with. I want to see. See, I always start with the domino effect. I want to see. It, it, it's very rare these people operate alone. Very rare. Because they know the process of you know getting this detail. Because even the same affidavit, the FBI mentioned, say, them, them get information from the elderly, people who are very old and mentally right, not so sound. Because no people out there say, them can't believe people still get scammed now. In the same FBI affidavit, it mentioned that the victims are people who are very old. Some of them have unsound mind, or in, their mind might not fully gone, but they're you know, they they they're, they're slowly losing it. So to say, you know, you can't believe this happened. They're not targeting 21 and 31 and 41 year old people. They're targeting people's grandmothers 
who are old and vulnerable right? people who you can sweet talk and you know sh pretend like you care about them to you you might think that's that's laughable but not for these people especially in a foreign especially in a uncle's place you have some not for those old age homes not for them people in the family them have pension and money to sit down upon, but then on the family or them family send them a some old age woman they are lonely they are lonely and they are aged then they will up in them age so when somebody call them oh how was your day i hope you're okay and, and them start to sweet them up and the people them start to feel like say you know oh this person care about me and then them send them a little money and then them send it back and say go and hold on because we wouldn't need it yet because and earn the person trust remember they did the video with this camera and this camera telling them how it work so don't just even people in no sense make sure say you don't get old one day make sure say you don't get old and, 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 and you know dementia and things start setting and you start lose you know your, your, your faculties not all together there and then somebody take advantage make sure make sure say you're a genius to the day you're dead man because as I said I've seen the comments somebody can't fall for that point in no sense the FBI make it clear that the victims are very old and some of them are mentally not too soon but of course I don't expect I don't expect your favorite Jamaican to care about foreigners who are not mentally sound because you don't even care about Jamaicans who are mentally sound we know mental illness in Jamaica is like right, pe people people take my unicorns right more seriously than they take mental illness in Jamaica people buy me unicorn them for them take right, mental illness serious so they just they see a suspender but as far as I'm concerned they need to start asking some questions start you know double check on you know see what they go but anyway Patreon squad big up on yourself yeah yeah you don't know more life Culture squad, see you certainly. Bless.